next on PIJN News. Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. There's a national day of prayer and repentance in Washington, D.C. on September 25 and 26. It's called The Return. Today we interview one of the co-chairs, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, author of The Harbinger II. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. On today's show, we have a returning guest. We've had him on at NRB a couple of times. And today via Skype is Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, who is the leader or pastor of the Jerusalem Center, uh, Beth Israel in Wayne, New Jersey. Also author of the newest, best-selling book, taking the New York Times bestseller list by storm, The Harbinger Two. Uh, welcome to the program, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. How are you, sir? Great to be with you, and great to be with you from home. What we, we meet in different circumstances, this is nice. Well, I'm all excited. We'll talk about your book in a few minutes, but The Return is a national event happening in Washington, D.C. this week, Friday and Saturday. That is 25 and 26 September. It's going to be simulcast, not only on God TV, on uh, Daystar, but also in 190 nations in 90 languages. And you have celebrity guests, including uh, Pat Robertson, Jim Dobson, Franklin Graham, Ann Graham Lotz. Uh, even I will be permitted humbly for one minute to, to say a prayer on the stage. But you and Kevin Jessup have been storming this idea for over a year. Tell us about the return. Yeah, uh, for those of, of uh, your audience who know the Harbinger and know what I've done, I've, ever since then I've been calling for a, a return. There has to be repentance. There has to be a return of America to God or, or else it's lost for America. At the same time, Kevin Jessup, my friend, a great man of God, he's had a burden also for this. And so we came together and we've been praying for years uh, for this to happen. And then we believe that this was the year. Now, this is this is long before this year came, but 2020 was the year. Um, and one is, it is a crucial time. We are watching uh, uh, America race away from God. On top of that, we've got a critical election coming up in November. And then on top of that, we have been shaken as we never have, which actually is linked to the mystery of the harbinger. Um, so this is crucial that, because God says there's one hope. It's not politics. It's not, it's not economics. It is revival. It is turning back to God. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. That is what the return is, uh, particularly on that Saturday, September 26th on the National Mall, but everywhere, as you say. Well, I'm excited to see it. And yet there have been so many other events that have been canceled this year because of COVID, sporting events, church events, some places are not even allowed to meet, but you guys got permits from the Washington DC authorities and you'll be live on the mall. If someone lives near there, what's the, what's the cross street? What should they look for? Yeah, basically the National Mall, you know how you know, how you know it, uh, Dr. Chaps, is it's in between just Capitol Hill and the Washington Monument. You just go in there and that's where we're gonna be. So the National Mall, you know, so in between those two things starts at, on Saturday, there's a, a pre-event on Friday night, I believe six o'clock or seven around there, well, you, it, it's on there. But, uh, and then on the day, it's nine o'clock. We're gonna gather together, sacred assembly, solemn assembly, we'll open up with the sound of the shofars um, and we'll be, we'll be there to come before God for America and the world, starting with our own repentance, starting with the repentance of the church, because it, it can't happen without that. And then we're going to go to America. I'm going to be giving up, delivering a prophetic word at 11 a.m. Um, and then we're going to get into the prayers and intercession for America, then into the world, have people all over the world praying and, and leading us in prayer as well. Uh, and then we're going to pray for revival and for God to have his way on this land. Uh, so it's going to be a sacred assembly. Um, and everybody who, who's in the area who can come, come. But if you can't, it's as you said, uh, it is simulcast, it is streamed, it'll be on the web. But make that day, September 26th, that Saturday, a day of prayer and repentance for revival. And it's also being uh, 
held in other cities, 150 cities in America, uh, hundreds of cities around the world, literally on all six continents except Antarctica. Uh, but but we're working on that. <laughs> with 30,000 churches are going to be simulcasting this all-day prayer meeting on Friday night and Saturday. How did you get that many people coordinated? Well, we just, you know what? Uh, it's not that we have uh, had a big organization, all that. We just. Uh, set the word out. I did like in March. I did a video, put it on the web, and they've had about two million, over two million views. I've been told um, that it just, it just people know they're sensing that this is the time, that this is the moment, that the, everybody has a sense of urgency. That if we don't do this now, then we may pass the point of no return. So I think it just spread because it's the Lord. There are entire regions of churches gathering together on this. So it's happening all over because I believe this is God's moment. So. You just said something prophetically. I wanna repeat what, what I thought I heard you say. We should return before the point of no return. And, and what happens if we don't repent and then we go into this election and uh, the nation takes a different turn? Yeah, well, well, you know, uh, in in the uh, Harbinger and in the new book, The Harbinger 2, uh, there is a, a template in the Bible of nations that are being warned by God, uh, and it, it starts with a strike, with a with an attack on the land, and it's limited, and it's a wake-up call. Well, that was our 9-11, and then comes this period, a span of years, where the nation's given to come back to God, uh, but then it ends. It comes at a certain point, um, and the thing is that I, I saw danger signs of this window ending before this year, and I, in fact, Dr. Chaps, I was uh, telling people publicly that I believe this is this is a year going to be a year of shaking and dark events, um, and so this is this is the signs of any. If we don't come back, we're going to be sealed. I mean, if we and if we take the and if we seal this course to, at this election away from God, the, we are sealing ourselves for judgment. That's why this is so crucial right now. Amen to that. There is a time of judgment coming. But if we return, if my people, as, as it says in Chronicles, uh, will humble themselves and repent of their sins, God will forgive their sins and heal our land. Let's take a short break. When we come back, Jonathan Kahn has got another best-selling book, The Harbinger 2. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign an important online petition. Today, I wanna to invite you to sign a critical petition to defend innocent babies and to end abortion in America. On this show, we like to pray and petition God, but we also need you to take action today by petitioning Congress to stop the taxpayer-funded child killing, especially by defunding Planned Parenthood, America's number one abortion provider. Why are your taxes paying to murder innocent children in the womb? Well, if Congress would simply define personhood as life beginning at conception, we can reverse Roe versus Wade. Please join me today by signing this important petition to Congress. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign your petition today. Sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. I'm Dr. Chaps. We're offering a flash sale on all of our teaching products when you visit PrayInJesusName.org. Click on the online bookstore and all of our products are now 50% off while supplies last this month only. But in addition to that, we're offering a spiritual growth pack with four of our best DVDs in one package, starting with how to have an effective prayer life, how to have an excellent marriage, Real Christianity in an Unreal World with Vince Dacchioli, and How to Become an Effective Christian Activist. You can grow in your spiritual life with all four of these DVD products, normally $30 each. That's a $120 value for half price, for just $60, and we'll throw in the shipping. So call us right now at 866-Obey-God and say, I want the Spiritual Growth Pack. I want those four DVDs for just $60, Call us right now for this special offer at 866-Obey-God. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined by Jonathan Kahn, who is making the television circuit because his newest bestseller, The Harbinger 2, uh, as of yesterday I saw was number four on the New York Times bestseller list, number four on the Amazon. Uh, is that in your category or among all books? How, did, how does Amazon rank that? 
<laughs> it kind of depends. You know, there's, there's all different categories, but on uh, it depends on the list. For instance, uh, New York Times, I think, uh, combined fiction ebook, it's number four. Uh, uh, USA Today, number five of all books in the world. So wow. it's it may it's been in the top ten of all books of basically you know depending on the category. Publishers Weekly uh, under under hardcover fiction, it's number two. So it all depends. But by God's grace, it's gone forth. There must be a secret inside the book. I mean, are you giving away the secret to printing money or your grandma's chocolate chip cookie recipe? Why would somebody buy this book? Well, this the Harbinger 2 is revealing really what is happening right now. I mean, this is the mystery. It's, it's picking up where the Harbinger left off. And that is that where we have gone, we, this mystery of judgment has progressed in America, it hasn't stopped with the Harbinger. And also I always knew there was gonna be another, another book because it was continuing. But also, you know, not only has it continued, not only have we follow, America been following this, this pattern of this temple of judgment, but what is happening right now is part of the mystery. In fact, so much so, Dr. Chaps, that that for years I was looking at 2020 and saying, you know, not that God has to do it, but but if this template continues, 2020 is going to be a year of, of the shaking. So I was saying for years, that's all part of it. So what is happening? Are we approaching judgment? Uh, is there, are, What do we need to know for the future? Uh, what is coming? And what do we need to know? And how do we need to stand? Is there anything we can do about it? These are crucial for what is happening right now. So it seems like a prophetic book about the end times, but I wanna ask you, a few years ago when you wrote The Harbinger One, is there anything in there that talked about what we've seen now in 2020? It's been a terrible year. It's been, we've had disease, we've had riots. Uh, there's even a meteor that has a 1% chance of striking Earth before election day. Uh, did you yeah. predict any of these things? Yeah, amazing that you said that because I look back at the Harbinger, you know, and there's a chapter called Things to Come. And and this is what's open one of the things that's opened up in the new book in the Harbinger too. And that is it says first of all it talks about the ending of this 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 span of years, this kind of window of time that's part of the template that shake great shakings will come upon the nation. And one of the things it says is is the division of the nation. You know, we've never been more divided than now. Another thing, and I'm talking about eight years ago, says it the disorder, civil disorder, that's one of the signs of judgment we're happening now. It talks about the breakdown of infrastructure, that, that that's happening now. Um, talks about economic collapsing, we have witnessed that as well, and more. But not only that, not only that, I mean, this, this is this kind of mind-boggling when I look at it. The question is asked in the original book, The Harbinger, it's asked how long between the you know the first strike that you know, I'm talking about the template of judgment in the Bible, the first strike and the the coming of the greater shakings on the land, and the answer is given that in the in the history of Israel, Southern Kingdom, it the first strike came in 605 B.C. Babylon. The the greater shakings, the return came on, in 586 B.C. You take those dates, that's in the original Harvard, that's 19 years. So in the new book is, is a chapter called The 19 Year Mystery. So 9 11 happened in 2001. When is the 19th year? And would it be a year of shaking? The 19th year is the year 2020. That oh. has been the year of shaking. And not only that, Dr. Right. Chaps, not yeah. only that, but Jeremiah the prophet, when he prophesied of what was going to happen, the shakings of the 19th year, he specifically said, a plague, a pestilence, in other words, disease pandemic will come upon the land. And that's one of the signs Jesus said in Matthew 24. It's also discussed in the book of Revelation that uh, in fact, one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, right, is, is uh, green because it's associated with disease and plague and pestilence. Uh, do you think yep. that is upon us? Is this, are we that close to the end? Well, I don't, I don't, I don't believe we're in, uh, you know, Revelation yet. So we're in, but we're we're certainly getting closer. And all these events. And listen, if we if we witness one of the things the Harbinger Two warns of is the fall of America. If we witness that, that's going to accelerate all these things of the end times that we read. But even there, there's a, a thirty. The, the largest chapter in the Harbinger Two is called the plague. There is so much behind this biblically that it, it, I mean, it's eerie, it's mind boggling. But yeah, I believe all this is as significant. I mean, you, what you talk about, biblical, you know, what is it? You got famine, you got pestilence, you got the sword. We've witnessed uh, pestilence. We've witnessed uh, violence throughout the land. And I believe, I don't believe it's over, uh, Dr. Chaps. I believe, I believe there's more shaking coming. And we've even, we've even witnessed food shortages, which kind of goes with famine. I believe there's more coming, but yeah, this is as biblical as anything we've ever witnessed. So. 
We've been talking about the famine, especially in third world countries. Our charity leads and feeds 300 children and orphans in India, where the slum kitchens that we run, over 12 kitchens feeding the slums where people are unemployed because of COVID, uh, literally bringing life-saving remedy to them. But when Jesus talks about famine, he also talks about war. And I wonder, we're just a, a drop in the ocean, right? But there's so much famine globally that I wonder if this could cause war in the months or years to come. Uh, it, it could very well. You know, everything we're what we're witnessing, it, you know, it, it leads to the next thing. For instance, we had the we had the uh, this plague, this COVID come upon it that helped feed the disorder and riots as well where we are now. So everything leads to the next thing. You know, um, and so and, and another thing with this is that you know we I mentioned that scripture, Second Chronicles seven fourteen, because the the harvester two ultimately goes to hope and what can we do about it and and what do we need to know? But it says if my people call by my name, you know that whole thing. Um, but what people don't realize is that what's the context for that? The verse be before is the context. And what's the context? It says, 2 Chronicles 7, 13, if I send a plague on the land, well, we got the plague. It's time for if my people. It says, if if I shut up the heavens, famine. Well, we've got famine in the world. It says, if I send locusts, do you know, maybe you know, Dr. Chaps, this year, 2020 is the year of the locusts. Locust, the greatest locust plague in generation. You got all three things saying that this is the time. So this is crucial biblical times and we have to rise to it. But yeah, we're, it's almost like it's a convergence, Dr. Chaps, a convergence on, on the world, but particularly on America. So your new book, The Harbinger 2, not only is published here in 2020, but it's explaining the fulfillment of that prophecy in 2 Chronicles 7, as you said, the plague and the famine and the locusts, but it's followed by, if my people, which, which is the, yes. the impetus behind your event, the return in Washington, DC. This Friday and Saturday, September 25, after 7, 6 or 7 p.m., and it's all day Saturday, the 26th, will be simulcast. What do you want people to do if they attend, if they watch from home, if they're watching a simulcast in one of 30,000 churches? What do you want the spirit behind people's actions to, to happen here? I want them to do Second Chronicles 14, which is, which is to humble, we gotta humble ourselves, we need to pray, we need to seek his face, and we need to turn from our ways. We need to repent because if we don't repent, America's not repenting. If we don't live in revival, we're not gonna see revival there. We have to do that first. So to come together, now you can even, people can even come together in their homes. And you know what, the ama amazing thing about this is that it turned out, out uh, Dr. Schaaf said, by the way, it starts at 9, 9 a.m. on Saturday and at 11 a.m. I'm led to give a prophetic word, which is all about what we're talking about to the nation. Um, so, but this is actually, if we found out afterwards that September 26th on the biblical calendar is called Shabbat Shubah, which means the day of the return. It's already appointed to return. You broke up there at the end, but it's the day of the return. This event may have been prophesied by scripture, or at least we're trying to fulfill it in God's timing. Let's take another short break. When we come back, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn will tell us if there's going to be a Harbinger 3 book released anytime soon. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. The Bible says this in James 1, that pure religion before God and the Father is to visit orphans and widows in their trouble. You know, we have been sponsoring up to 259 orphans and children in one of the poorest states in India for many years, but now there is a famine of biblical proportions happening because of the unemployment there. We are sponsoring people who otherwise cannot feed themselves. We've given over $10,000 to feed up to 100,000 meals to the poorest of poor in one of the poorest states in the world. We need your support. We need your financial contributions. Can you help us? There's somebody out there watching who could give $1,000 or even $10,000 toward a matching gift for what we have already provided. Please donate today. Prayinjesusname.org is our website. Or you can call us at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please help us feed the poor today. You know, the Bible says in 1 Timothy 2 that we are to pray for kings and all those in authority. Why? So that we can live peaceful lives in godliness and contentment. In that spirit of prayer, we have commissioned 500 commemorative Donald Trump golden coins. 
Each one says, in God we trust. And we will send this to you for a donation of any amount when you call us right now at 866-Obey-God or give through our website, PrayInJesusName.org. There's a limited number of these commemorative coins and why would you have this? Well, every time you look at it or feel it in your pocket, we want you to be reminded to pray for our president, especially in this election year, especially with all that's been happening in the news, we need to uplift President Donald Trump in prayer. Call us right now at 866-Obey-God and for a donation of any amount, listen, we're running out, limited supplies. Call us right now and we'll ship you a Donald Trump coin. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined again by Jonathan Kahn, who has written The Harbinger 2. But I'm gonna ask perhaps the question, nobody else, we're gonna make news here today. Breaking news, <laughs> is there going to be a Harbinger 3 book released and, and how many years from now? Oh my goodness, wow, oh my goodness. Well, first of all, yeah, it's a good thing you don't kind of put me put me on the spotlight. Uh, the, the, uh, I can't say that, I mean, except I believe there will be. I mean, I believe there will be a Harbinger 3. As far as when, I can't tell you. I knew when I wrote the Harbinger 1, there was gonna be a Harbinger 2. I knew that, but I yeah. knew that I could not say when. It was only when I prayed in 2019 and said, Lord, what's the next book? And it was this, and I, and I knew it was gonna be linked to a year of shaking that was coming. So it's gonna be at the prophetic time, I can't plan that. That, but I do believe yeah. there will be because of events that are gonna take place. So the spirit of the prophet is subject to God who will reveal it in the right time. And that's kind of how you come up with these books is you wait, you pray and you hear from God and he gives you what you refer to as mysteries that are being revealed to you, but also through the Bible. It's, it's not like Absolutely. you're a greater Absolutely. prophet than, than John the Revelator. Uh, how do you so, receive these mysteries? Well, you know what? I, I could never reproduce it, uh, Dr. Chaps. I could never, if I had to figure out how could I write the Harbinger again or write the Harbinger 2 again or any of them, yeah, I could not. What happened, I mean, the Harbinger, it all began actually when I'm standing, I'm standing in ground zero and I saw that tree um, and, and something said to me, there's a mystery here, you gotta seek it. And it started becoming this, it was this puzzle piece of a mystery that kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and you know, there are times when I, I needed the key and then something would happen that would be the key or I'm typing something in my computer and something comes up that I did not, I did not Google, you know, so things just happen and God, or sometimes God puts something in my mind, my, my heart. And I know, and I, I don't even know if it's true. It's like, wow, could that be? And I go on the web and there it is. So it's step by step, but I, it's something that I, is not man-made. I could not reproduce it, but it, it's happened every time. So it, if you are, I wanna say, the, the, I'm using the wrong word here, but channeling a spirit, you believe it is the Holy Spirit that is writing these books through you. I, I believe, you know, the, the Bible says that the Spirit will give you, he, he, will, he will lead you into all truth. That this is, this is for every believer. He will lead us, he gives us insight, you know, and he leads us and he puts things on our hearts and gives us revelation. Um, so yeah, I believe, so without any question, that is what the Bible says. So I believe God is not dead, he's alive and he still speaks. And you've given several of these mysteries in the Harbinger 2. Uh, what are, we just have like three yeah. or four minutes left. Give us some highlights. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just mention a few. First of all, uh, one of the sections are the mysteries that I did not reveal in the Harbinger one because there were so many of them. The second is what's happened since, the, the mystery has continued, the Harbingers have manifested since the Harbinger, and the third is what's happening now. I'll give a very quick thing. One is that in the time of judgment, uh, God, the, you know, the judgment strike the powers of the nation, um, and it brings them back to their foundation. On 9-11, the Pentagon was struck. Well, you know what? The the when America rose to military superpower, it was 1941. Entered uh, Second World War. The Pentagon was built and was joined to that rise to superpower. But here's the thing: what day was the Pentagon built? When was it begun? What was the birthday of the Pentagon? The Pentagon was born on 9/11. September 11th is its birthday. And so there, the mystery of God that it returned to the foundation. The warning is. Look, America, you all your blessings come from me, says the Lord. If you if you war against me, your blessings, your military power, your economic power will collapse as well. By the way, the other place that was struck was New York, which symbolized America's economic power. New York was born on 9-11. That's when Henry Hudson came. I mean, the same thing. That's just a quick thing. Uh, I'll mention about the where we are right now, the, the plague. Um, you know, when Jeremiah speaks about that plague in the 19th year, he says it, it will actually be linked 
to you, Israel, offering up your children. This is, a, this, this is the, the offering of children. Well, listen, America has offered up 60 million children. The world, this generation of the world is all, has offered up 1.5, more than any other generation. So we have this plague Wait, coming on. And the yeah. thing is that Jeremiah said it will return to the place where, more, where the children's blood were shed. What's the, what's the capital of abortion in America? New York City. Where did the plague strike the, the, the greatest to this day? It's New York City. Um, the day that the plague came to America, actually it was recorded, uh, it was recorded in Seattle. Next day it made headlines all over America. There was a date next to the headlines. You know what the date was? January 22nd, the date that America legalized abortion. Jeremiah, <laughs> let me, let me tell you, there's so much, but I'm just gonna tell you a little bit, wow. Dr. Chaps. Uh, the, the Jeremiah, remember when he cried out, is there any bomb in Gilead, you know, healing, uh, healing in Gilead? Well, he was crying out in a prophecy that had to do with the judgment that came for them offering up their children. Well, uh, America's been seeking for a cure for this, a bomb of Gilead. In the spring, a company comes out with a, a sort of a cure, not uh, stock market goes up 500 points. You know what the name of the company? Gilead, as in the bomb of Gilead. I'll wow. tell you one more. I'm going to tell you one more. There's so much, but I'll just tell you one more about this. You can't and that is that. Up. Go ahead. You know, there, Okay, there, there's a jubilee, also not only a blessing, but of judgment. If you ha took somebody's land, it gets taken away from you. If you take life, life is taken. Well, when did America legalize abortion on demand? It happened before 73, it happened in 1970, when New York particularly legalized it, spread it through the nation. Abor well, when is the, what is the jubilee of abortion? The year 2020. What was the date that New York legalized it? It was April 9th and April 10th, two votes. The peak of the plague on New York that was identified April 9th and April 10th, 50 years to the exact date. We're out of time, but we're gonna have Rabbi Khan on for an extra segment. Uh, watch this show and stay tuned because we can't get enough. I mean, I ask him one question and, and he's got new revelations. Uh, his website, by the way, please attend The Return. Visit thereturn.org to register your church for the simulcast this Friday and Saturday. Our website is PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Please call us if you want prayer at 866-Obey-God. We'll see you next time. Today, I wanna to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Would you sign that petition with me? Let's take action today. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best financial donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now, 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.